we discussed some examples. Uh, now, there are other ways to realize a space curve uh, in R 3. So, in fact, many a times a curve in a space is represented as a as a section of a surface as a section of a surface by another that is when you take two surfaces and both of them are intersecting each other so their section will give you a curve uh, which lies in a space uh, for example you can see that if you consider a cylinder cylinder is a surface in r3 and its equation uh, is given by say okay anything i will discuss that later suppose this is a cylinder which is a surface and then you cut it by a plane now the intersection of the two will be a circle like this now this circle is not lying in the x y plane it is above the x y plane okay so this circle would lie in a space and it is obtained as a section of a cylinder uh, through a plane similarly if you cut a sphere through a plane once again you will be getting a circle so more generally so in general what happens is uh, look here uh, to describe the phenomena you look consider a function from an interval a b into r first And you know the graph of this function, graph of f, is the set of all those points x, y in R2, such that y equal to f of x. Now, this is a subset of R2. And you say uh, that uh, it is the graph of f in R2. Well, I can think of the graph of f in R 3 as well. So, graph of f in R 3. The first is graph of f in R 2. So, by definition, it will be set of all triplets x, y, z in R 3 such that y equal to f x. Now, this you can see is a subset of R 3. We have considered the same function, but the only thing is that z is also there, which is varying arbitrarily along z axis. So, what will happen is that you have in x y plane the circle and z is freely moving with all the points. So, it will generate a cylinder. Okay, so no, not really like this. Uh, it will be a cylinder uh, of this kind. Uh, for example, I in x y plane, I have uh, this kind of a curve. This is y equal to f x. Okay, this lies in the x y plane. Now you allow z to vary arbitrarily, so you will be getting a cylindrical shape like this. Okay. So, this cylinder is the surface which is in fact the graph of the function y equal to f x in R 3. So, if you find something written like this y equal to f x then you immediate you should immediately realize that this is a surface in R 3. If I ask you what is uh, this graph in R2, the answer is it is some curve, but if you look at it in R3, it will be a surface. So, what you do is now consider, now consider 
two surfaces two surfaces y equal to f x number one and say z equal to g x number two these are the two surfaces one and two what i do i consider both the equations simultaneously so it is like this i am considering a circle say x square plus y square equal to 1 or y equal to plus minus under root 1 minus x square and the other one I take another surface z equal to something c a constant. Now when you take these two equations together means I am considering uh, those the common part between these two surfaces the common part between these two surfaces will in fact be a circle. In general if you take two surfaces y equal to f x and z equal to g x and then think of their common part, their common part must be a, a, a curve and that curve lies necessarily in the space. So, equations 1 and 2, so equations simultaneous equations equations 1 and 2 together represent a space curve. So, we should convince ourselves that the two equations of two surfaces will represent a space curve. So, many a times we write down the equation of a curve as these two. Now, if somebody wants to know what will be the parametric equation of the same curve. So, in order to find the parametric equation, so what I will be doing, I will be writing the position vector of the point, uh, uh, arbitrary point of this uh, curve as x, f x and g x. the x component, the y component and the z component and so by writing uh, the position vector in this manner you notice immediately that x is the generalized parameter, generalized parameter of the curve represented by two equation of the curve. Which curve? Which is represented by equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now, you can find out all the things, the tangent vector, the natural parameter, all kinds of things you can find out. So, I will find out r dot to see the tangent vector of the curve. So, r dot means dr over dx because over here the parameter is x. So, it is 1 and this I will be denoting by f dash g dash x. Here I am denoting f dash by the derivative of f with respect to x and g dash means derivative of g with respect to the parameter x. Okay. So, this is the tangent vector, unit tangent just take the modulus, modulus of r dot is equal to under root 1 plus f dash square plus g dash square. You divide this vector by this scalar that will give you the unit tangent to the space curve y equal to f x and z equal to g x. Uh, sometimes some changes will occur like this instead of writing the equation y equal to f x you can represent it in a implicit form also. So, you can also write down f x y equal to 0 or a constant and you can also write down instead of writing a small f you better write capital F and this you can write down as ok over there. So, equation number 1 sometime is also written as some f x y equal to 0 and this is 
implicit form of equation 1 and implicit form of the second equation will be g x y equal to 0. Okay. So, sometime it is implicit form or sometime it is implicit form the only thing that you need to keep in mind that such equation represent the surface in R theory. We are working in R theory. So, without mentioning I will say it is a surface. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> now Uh, now, there is another come to the tang equation of the tangent in order to work out the equation of the tangent line. I need to discuss uh, something from calculus first. Okay. There is a symbol which is used quite often, which is little o. So, I will explain you what is this symbol little o. The symbol o. There is a symbol of capital O also, but I am more concerned with this small o. Look here, I give you a situation. For example, I have two functions f and g real valued or complex values. So, let f and g be real or complex valued functions. Okay. And with limit of f x when x goes to 0 is 0 and also this is limit of g is also 0 when x goes to 0. These are the two functions whose limit is 0 when x approaches to 0. Now, you have and uh, look at the function the quotient function f x upon g x or f upon g x. Now, I can consider the limit of this quotient. You cannot say immediately at the limit of f and g, f quotient g. Now, this limit uh, may be 0 or it may be infinite also. It depends on the speed of approaching 0. Now, if f approaches to 0 faster than g, this limit will be 0. Okay. Whereas, if g approaches to x as to 0 faster than f, then the limit of this quotient will be infinite. Now, in the first case, in the first case, this fact is stated by writing that f is little o x or g.